Hello chess friends and welcome to the channel. Today is day two of the semi-finals at the Riga Grand Prix. Wesley saw and Mamediarov drew their game and Shaq will play the grand final because he won game one. So I will show you the other game, Grishuk against Vasheda Grave, great game really played at Grandmaster level. Let's start. Grishuk with the white pieces opens with d4 and Vasheda Grave answers with knight to f6, c4, g6, here comes h4, a rare line often played by the great Simon Williams, but never played by Grishuk. Here comes c5, attacking the center, d5, now b5, and c captures on b5. a6 now, e3, so that the bishop is now protecting b5, and black has no intention to capture now. The game is already original. Bishop in fiancetto to b7, knight to c3, and short castle for black. Here comes knight to f3, a solid development. If we go back one move, another interesting idea is to play h5, sacrificing the pawn. Here comes knight captures on h5, g4, knight back on f6, g5, the knight will move back again to h5, but here comes bishop to e2, the idea is to change the bishop on h5, opening the castle and to play e4, controlling the center. So this is really an interesting alternative. Going back to our game, knight to f3, here comes d6 and a4. Bishop to g4 now pinning the knight and rook to a3. So this is a good move, an interesting move. Uh, giving some space to the rook, also the rook uh, is giving an extra protection to c3, but probably, in my idea, it's uh, a bit too early. There are other moves uh, to play before, uh, bishop to d2, for example, e4, another good move, but anyway, rook to a3 is not a bad move at all. a captures on b5, the bishop recaptures on b5, now this bishop is strong here on b5, and it seems that the opening is going in Grishuk's favor. Knight to a6, e4, good move, knight to b4, and now if white plays short castle, then uh, black could try to play in the center with e6, instead bishop back to e2 comes, e6 is still good, but uh, um, Vashida Grab continues with knight to d7. Now, this bishop is uh, starting to exert some pressure on the long diagonal, short castle, and queen to b6. Now, because the bishop is not on b5 anymore, now black is trying to add more pressure and to um, play on this semi open b5. Now, in this position, bishop to d2 reinforcing c3 is a good move. Also, bishop to g5 is another good move. Here comes instead rook to e1. So, this is not a mistake, but this is a move that uh, loses the tempo. A move that Grishuk, in the interview after the game, criticized very much. During the game, he analyzed this variation. Let's watch it together. Instead of rook to e1, he wanted to play knight to b5, now queen back to b7, bishop to g5 now, bishop captures, bishop captures, bishop captures on a3, the bishop captures the rook on f8, knight captures and knight captures. For stockfish, white is a bit better, for Grishuk, probably quite a bit better. Anyway, going back to our game, after Vasheda Grav starts to put more pressure on the b5, he continues with rook to e1. Queen to b7, bishop to g5 now attacking e7. At first, bishop captures on f3, the g pawn recaptures, also the bishop is the same. Knight to e5, and now the queen is protecting e7. Not only that, but notice that both knights are now watching d3. Grishuk already understands that Vasheda Graf's plan is to play c4, and then to move one of these two knights on this powerful uh, outpost, and so he brings back uh, the rook to f1. That's a pity, because that uh, 
rook maneuver lost one time while it was very important for white to create with queen to d2 that powerful queen and bishop battery against the bishop in fiancetto now there is little or no time to play queen to d2 so rook back to f1 and c4 now of course the c4 pawn is protected by the knight this is a strong outpost so b3 against c4 very good move rook in f goes to c8 and bishop back to d2 knight in b jumps to d3 f4 attacking the knight and queen to b4 against the unprotected rook knight back to b1 is the best move to protect the rook and here comes c3 and this move is strong uh, the position is equal but uh, um, all the initiative is in black sand f captures only five is the best move knight to b2 attacking the queen queen to c2 c captures on the five the queen moves away from the c5 capturing the knight queen captures only four now queen captures on the two because the uh, of course the bishop was under attack and rook to c2 against the queen black is still a piece down but uh, uh, he has a really dangerous attack there is also bishop captures on e5 in the cards and the king is exposed now here here comes probably the only not the only because rook to e1 was an inaccuracy the second inaccuracy of the game Grishu continues with queen to d3 giving back the piece but if we go back one move the best move is bishop to f3 now queen captures queen captures but uh, and it seems that uh, white also uh, gained the equality but what happens it happens that this is a draw because queen to g4 we check king to h2 now bishop captures we check f4 is the only move bishop captures we check the quality um, white must give back the rook Queen captures, we check, and the, the king can't move back to h1 because this is dangerous and we lose the game. So, queen to, king to h3, queen to f3 with uh, a draw by, by repetition because let's watch what happens if now the king, instead of moving back, goes to h1. We said this is too dangerous. In fact, here comes queen captures on h4, we check, king to g1, and... Queen to g4 we check, king to h1, rook to c8, protected by the queen, and if the king, if uh, the white's queen moves away, this is winning. So, after rook to c2, better to play bishop to f3, but here comes queen to d3, and the rook captures on e2. Queen captures queen, the rook recaptures, he captures on d6 because this pawn was under attack and after the pawn recaptures on d6 here we must stop a bit and analyze this end game so a position where white for the moment is a pawn up also has two connect pass pawns but these two pawns are not advanced yet and if you watch the position of his pieces you see that there is no coordination in white pieces Black, on the other hand, has good pieces and the king doesn't, um, uh, is not under attack, is well protected, while the white's king is really exposed. So, it seems that black is a bit better. Knight to d2, attacking the rook, rook to g4 we check, king to h1, rook captures on h4, black is really a bit better king to g2 rook to d4 now attacking the knight knight to f3 and instead of capturing the pawn that is a good move uh, vasheda grav's goal is to avoid any improvement of this uh, queen side so at first rook to g4 we check king to h3 and rook to b4 now watching b3 so that uh, this rook can't move uh, behind it's already behind the pawn but this is not a good position can't move back and support the pawn advance also support the uh, defense of the king so rook to b1 rook to c8 king to g2 
and rook to c3. Knight to g1, rook to c2, knight back to f3, and rook to g4, we check. See that uh, these uh, black rooks are really active. King to f1, rook to f4 against the knight. Here we, uh, we will see some repetition. King to g2, again, rook to g4, we check. King to f1, rook to f4 again, king to g2, and here comes a beautiful move, g5. The knight can't capture, of course, this pawn, because the rook will capture here on f2, winning the game. Also, g4 is in the cards, and when the knight will be threatened by the pawn, must move away, and f2 will fall. So, even if it's passive, rook to f1, it's a logical idea, but here comes rook to g4, we check, king to h1, and rook to c3 against the knight. Not only that, because if the knight moves away, the rook will move to h3, and this is a big problem. Of course, the knight can move to g2, but this is the idea to restrict the king here in the corner. Rook to g1, rook to f4, now the two rooks against the knight. Knight to h2, and see how passive is white, and rook captures on f2. Rook captures on g5, but after the rook on c3 moves to c2, Grishok resigns. Because what to do? This knight is surely lost. Knight to f3 is the best move to play, because of course knight to g4 can't be played, or rook to c1 is checkmate. So the knight is lost. After rook captures on f3, white is a piece down with both rooks misplaced, a king in the corner, and some checkmating threats. So, even if Grishuk had two connected pass pawns, then the bad position of his pieces and of the king didn't give him time to activate the connected pass pawns. On the other hand, Vashila Grab played a great game and he will now play the grand final against Mamediarov. Our video is over. Thank you very much for watching and see you soon. Goodbye.